A fetal cystic hygroma is a fluid-filled sac caused by lymphatic blockage that's identified in a fetus, generally via the first trimester prenatal ultrasound. They commonly involve the neck, but can also extend over a larger part of the fetus. Cystic hygromas can cause cosmetic issues in the baby after birth and can arise in tandem with more serious health problems, largely because of their association with genetic syndromes. We'll learn about what fetal cystic hygromas look like clinically, their pathophysiology, and the conditions they're associated with, both genetic and non-genetic. We'll see how they're worked up and managed, and finally I'll mention some references where you can learn more. In the name cystic hygroma, the cyst part refers to a fluid-filled sac, and hygroma refers to a collection of serous, or pale, clear, fluid. Put together, these words refer to a malformation of the lymphatic system in which lymph, which is a combination of interstitial fluid and white blood cells, that has entered the lymphatic vessels on its way back to the bloodstream, gets blocked and collects as a swelling that appears lucent, or black, on ultrasound. Cystic hygromas are usually identified by routine ultrasound near the end of the first trimester, or sometimes during the beginning of the second trimester. A classic cystic hygroma is septated, meaning it has internal divisions, and involves the length of the fetus from head to rump. Smaller cystic hygromas happen too, which most often just involve the neck, and some cystic hygromas may be non-septated, or quote, simple. A smaller swelling that's restricted only to the posterior neck may not be a cystic hygroma, but may instead be something called increased nuchal translucency, or increased NT. The reason for the two categories is that true cystic hygroma carries a worse prognosis than just increased NT. It's more often caused by a genetic defect, and more often appears in conjunction with other birth defects, like heart defects or fetal or neonatal death. Fetal death, usually called fetal demise, is more common if a cystic hygroma is accompanied by other anomalies like heart defects or by fetal hydrops, which is a swelling in multiple fetal body compartments, like the pleural, pericardial, or abdominal spaces. This is a type of non-immune hydrops, in contrast to immune hydrops, which is caused by blood antigen incompatibility, for example, when an Rh-positive fetus is attacked by an Rh-negative mother's immune system in utero. Interestingly, the swelling of a first trimester cystic hygroma usually disappears during gestation, although it can leave redundant or loose skin, or even a webbed neck, where the swelling was. If it doesn't disappear, swelling can lead to cosmetic defects or problems eating, speaking, or breathing if it has a mass effect within the neck. Mass effect prenatally can cause polyhydramnios by impairing fetal swallowing. Anatomically, cystic hygroma is caused by abnormal development of the lymphatics, where lymph cannot properly return to the venous system. This results in swollen, endothelial-lined cavernous spaces that accumulate lymph. Cystic hygromas can be an isolated finding arising from an unknown cause. Alternatively, they can co-occur with other birth defects, like heart defects, often as part of a genetic syndrome. The most common genetic causes are aneuploidies, which is when a person has either more or fewer than 46 chromosomes. About half of fetuses with first trimester cystic hygroma have an aneuploidy. Turner syndrome, a single X chromosome instead of XX or XY, and Down syndrome, which is three chromosome 21s instead of two, also called trisomy 21, are the most commonly implicated aneuploidies. Others, such as trisomy 13, trisomy 18, and triploidy, which is three copies of each chromosome, may also be responsible. There are other genetic causes that don't involve whole chromosome numerical abnormalities. The most likely one of these is Noonan syndrome, a genetic disorder of the signaling pathway called RASMAPK. Features of Noonan syndrome include heart defects, such as pulmonary valve stenosis, short stature, learning issues, a webbed neck, and specific facial features. Additionally, there can be non-genetic causes of fetal cystic hygroma, such as maternal viral infections like parvovirus or in utero alcohol exposure. Often, though, there's no identifiable cause. When a cystic hygroma is found, a woman should be counseled on the risks of phenyl aneuploidy and other possible phenyl malformations. This is done either by a high-risk obstetrician called a maternal fetal medicine specialist and or by a prenatal genetic counselor or geneticist. A detailed fetal survey is done by ultrasound 
both when the cystic hygroma is discovered and later in the second trimester to look for changes in the cystic hygroma and for other birth defects. An ultrasound devoted solely to the fetus's heart, called a fetal echocardiogram, is also recommended at around 20 weeks gestation to evaluate for fetal heart defects. A family medical history called a pedigree is also obtained. Because of the increased risk of chromosomal abnormalities, genetic testing is offered. The sample for testing comes from a so-called invasive procedure, either chorionic villus sampling, or CVS, or amniocentesis. CVS is where a piece of the placenta is obtained using an ultrasound-guided needle, and amniocentesis is a similar procedure that instead collects amniotic fluid, which contains shed fetal skin cells. The sample is used to do a microarray, a genetic test which can identify missing or extra chromosomes and missing or extra pieces of chromosomes. In some special situations, alternative methods might be used instead to look for missing or extra genetic material. One of these is called a karyotype, and the other is called fluorescence in situ hybridization, or FISH, but their microarray is the gold standard. A non-invasive test to look for chromosome problems also exists, called cell-free fetal DNA testing. This is where small bits of DNA from the placenta that end up in mother's blood are tested for extra or missing chromosomes. It may sound like this method would make invasive testing obsolete, but currently it's less reliable than invasive testing to identify potential causes of fetal cystic hygroma. If a genetic syndrome or additional congenital malformation is identified, or even on account of the risk of these complications, some women will choose to terminate a pregnancy with a fetal cystic hygroma. For pregnancies continued to term, the most important planning for delivery is assessing whether a cystic hygroma of the neck, if present, is likely to compromise the airway. If so, the exit procedure, which stands for ex utero intrapartum treatment, is done, or an endotracheal tube is placed during a C-section before the fetus is separated from the placental blood supply. Even after a standard delivery, cystic hygromas of the neck can affect breathing and feeding, so the baby is watched closely in the neonatal period. An exam of the baby by a geneticist and an echocardiogram sometime after birth may be appropriate to look for other anomalies. A surgeon should be consulted for disfiguring cystic hygromas since they can be resected. Finally, sclerosing agents injected into the cysts to cause them to involute have been trialed. To summarize, fetal cystic hygromas are fluid-filled swellings affecting a fetus that may be isolated or occur in conjunction with other congenital anomalies. They can be caused by genetic defects or by in utero infections or can happen for an unknown reason. When a fetal cystic hygroma is found on prenatal ultrasound, the most important step is follow-up with a specialist trained in the counseling and management of this finding. To learn more, please see the references listed in the info section below.